All right. Um, hi, I'm Avery. I'm a first year PhD student at Duke. Um, and I worked on this starting during my undergrad at Columbia and then after graduation over the summer at IBM Research with George, James, and Hubertus. Um, and today we're going to be talking about containers, specifically if we should trust them. So containers are very popular. They're very scalable, um, they're very lightweight, but right now we currently trust them blindly. And so the work that we did over the summer was to extend a chain of trust from hardware up to each individual container instance. So I'm going to be going over now how this chain of trust is built. During the boot process, each component is measured um, to verify the integrity of each of the software components during this boot process. These measurements are a cryptographic hash of each software component, and they are recorded in TPM registers to allow for verification. Uh, the TPM is a trusted platform module. It's a piece of um, hardware that is designed to secure the platform through um, artifact storage. The TPM also has burned in keys um, that allow for the identity of a platform to be verified. But in particular for this project, we care about these platform configuration registers, the PCRs. Um, there are typically 24 PCRs per chip, um, and these allow for the secure storage of values. And so we have um, throughout the boot process, we have each hash is recorded. The OS and firmware can change these, the values of these registers through PCR extension. And so a PCR extension is taking the value currently held in the register, concatenating it with the value that needs to be added, and taking the hash of this and storing it back in the register. So through these platform configuration registers, you have a chain of hashes that then can then be replayed to verify um, the integrity. And so, Linux IMA aims to extend these measurements throughout runtime. Um, so the goal of IMA is to extend these measurements and detect changes in file integrity, whether that be malicious or accidental, through measuring applications when they are executed. Um, these measurements are measured and then recorded as well in the PCR, as well as recorded in a log. And so using this log and the TPM quote, you're able to have this non-reputable log of application measurements from the initial boot measurement through all the applications that have run on the system. And so using these measurements, we can then build trust in remote environments. Given the, the boot measurements, the application measurements, and attest, the attesting machine can prove to a verifier um, and attest to its own system integrity. Um, this is done through a TPM quote, or any other evidence that the attesting machine gives to this remote verifier. And then the verifier will contain some sort of policy engine that then is able to make a decision given this evidence on the integrity of the machine. Um, once this de decision has been made, it can give secure payloads, send keys, because we're building trust um, in this platform. And so what happens when we add containers to this picture? Um, so IMA still measures these applications. Um, these measurements are still being recorded in the logs. They're being stored in the TPM. But there is a need for namespace support here. Which of these measurements are coming from a container? Um, you can't tell which of these applications is being executed by a container versus on the host. There's no isolation of these measurements. There's no way to tell them apart. And so our preliminary approach for extending this chain of trust from um, the hardware to the containers is extending Linux IMA to containers. We do this using eBPF. We actually hook into the same LSM hook that IMA does to record its measurements of the, the host measurements. And so we load an eBPF program, attaching it to the LSM hook in map file. Um, in this eBPF program, we record the namespace of the caller of nmap that mapped the file as executable. And we pass this to a kernel module that we wrote, image like container file integrity. We we're looking at extending IMA through adding this namespace support with eBPF and then just built off that through 
doing there, the container image measurement. Are there any sort of size issues with like uh, IMA being an append only log? Um, it would depend on your IMA policy as well as how many containers you're running. Um, the IMA files can get a bit large, um, but I think there are some patches to deal with that in the future. Probably scaling will be an issue at some point. Um, okay, so you talked about uh, namespace. What type of namespace is involved? I had looked at doing some kernel auditing of uh, namespaces to try and nail down a container. Mm -hmm. And that proved to be difficult to nail down because definitions of containers varied a lot between different vendors. Yeah. And so I eventually abandoned the idea of, of logging a set of namespace identifiers and moved towards a container identifier in the kernel itself. Mm -hmm. um, that work is currently uh, uh, suspended. Uh, well, it's 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 having a nap. It's, yeah. it's not it's not done yet. Um, so I, I guess the question is, which namespace, or is it a collection of namespaces? Um, we were initially working with C group namespaces, um, and that's one line of code. So we kind of been switching back and forth to see the granularity that we can get for these attestations. Um, so I guess the, the point is that it's configurable. Um, we're still trying to figure out which one we can nail down to get the, the, the most granularity for them. Good luck with that. Thanks. <laughs> Good talk. Oh, thanks. Um, <clears throat> So the measurements, the Merkle tree that you showed, is that just of the file contents or what all goes into like hash A and hash B? Yeah, it's just of the file contents. So not X adders or any other? No. Okay. That was... um, and then second, lastly, the, the ask for them to be distributed. If it were, I mean, that's, that's pretty straightforward if, if you're just like stepping through the file system in a predictable way to come up with that Merkle hash. Are you asking that maybe something like that would just be included in like the image OCI, like annotation of some kind? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if we had a hash that was able to be um, created also from what's visible from the file system, that that's what we would need. Okay, um, cool. Then maybe eventually adding more, more metadata would be neat. Yeah. And if you're just like with a file that was hashed as a kid, well, that might be useful. Can we include it? Well, like, like, right. you know, yeah. Like yes, it should. Like, yeah. it's, I mean, set your ID would be good to know. Yeah. Um, set cap would be good to know. Yeah. Sure. Anyone else? Okay. Looks like we might be on for Stay here on your right.